Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good. From Volta region, Ghana, West Africa, uh, I say good, good evening to you. But whatever time zone you are on, uh, if it's good morning, I say good morning. I know, I hope you can hear me. Yes, sir. Okay. So good uh, evening yes. to you. Good uh, morning to you wherever you are. And if you are on Facebook Live, God bless you so much. Uh, I would have loved to join you via uh, face to face video chat. But as technology will have it, uh, somehow I just have to go off. I don't know. I'm still working on it to get you through that live feed. But I want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. I bring you greetings from the Assemblies of God Ghana. Hello? Yes, I was here. Okay. So I bring you greetings from the Assemblies of God Church Ghana. I bring you greetings from my spiritual father, Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Teriaga, the lead pastor of Interim Assemblies of God, Sokka de Lope. I bring you greetings also from my own congregation, the Protest Hand Assemblies of God, Rosita. Evening, good morning, and good afternoon to you all. God bless you so much. It's a joy to be here. And I am not one man who is enthused about numbers. I believe that when God decided to bring salvation to the world, he brought in one man called Jesus Christ. When he wanted to save the people of Egypt, he brought one man called Moses. So anytime God wants to start something new, he will reach out to one man. Remember, he reached out to one man called Noah for the flood. So God is reaching out to somebody to show somebody love, his unconditional love, so that we can spread his love abroad. Good evening to you once again. The, it's an obvious tax. When you want to talk about money, you can look at the richest people in the world and talk about it. I hope you agree with me. If you want to talk about uh, marriage, you can look at people who have been married for so long and they, they have been together and the love is blossomed. Then you can use them as an epitome to talk about. But when we want to talk about love, who else will be the epitome? Who else will be the yastic to talk about love except God. So, but who am I? If it's about finance, I know that I can Google some rich people and read their story. If it's about any other topic, researching is easy. But whilst researching about love, not just today, because I have been someone who had taught love, preached love, and been a relationship and marriage counselor for long. So if it's about love, I think I know a thing or two about it. But the question is, even though I have had that training, that upbringing, can I say, oh, I know everything about love? Certainly not. On the flyer we all have, we are supposed to look at one of the Bible verses, which is common, even without opening the Bible, I know everybody can recite. So like the norm is, let everybody just unmute your mic and let's read one of the greatest, one of the greatest ever written. Everybody can mute your mic and let's read the book of John chapter three, verse 16. John is the elder the elder of the church. John is the one Jesus loved. John is the only disciple who was fried in oil but didn't die. He wrote the book of Revelation. And anytime I talk about John, I get goose pimples because he was a man, but he, he had so much. So let's read the book of John chapter three and the verse 16. Even if you don't have your Bible open, I know you can read it. So let's go. Everyone listening, Jets. 
unmute your mic and let's read John chapter 3, verse 16, as you have it in your Bible. John. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's read. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. That he gave only the Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Okay, maybe we can remute our mics whilst we share the unconditionality of the love God has for us. Amen. Yes, John, for God so loved the world that he gave his, yes, this, this is an amazing scripture. And this one, it's, I'm sure everybody on this platform can quote this verbatim without uh, missing words. But man of God, you also read for me 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. You read for me, John, first John. So maybe you can project it as you just did. First John chapter three, verse 11. Verse 16 is another powerful, first John chapter three, verse 16 is also another powerful uh, verse, I believe, but let's dwell on first John chapter three, verse 11. Okay. Yes. First John three. 11. For this 11, yeah. the message that we heard from the beginning that we should love mm. one another. Amen. This is the message you get from the beginning. Okay, let's read. Let's read on from verse. No, we we'll read, we we'll read 12. We will end in 16, but let's read 12, okay. 13, 14, 15, and end in 16. Okay. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he in him? Because why did he slew him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers righteous. Thirty. Mm -hmm. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love mm -hmm. the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because mm. he laid down his, his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Amen. Ah, what a powerful. See, anytime I read 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. I know that hereby perceive we the love of God. We can only imagine it. Listen to it. We can only imagine the love of God because he laid down his life. So greater love has no man than this, than a man will lay down his life for his brethren. The unconditionality of this love is what we want to look at. I've always stated that coming to love is not finding a perfect person. That's human love. But finding an imperfect person and seeing that person perfectly. I take it again. Coming to love is not finding an, a perfect person, but seeing an imperfect person perfectly. This is definition of even human love. But the love of Christ, the love of God surpasses even this thought because before the unconditionality of a human love, there is a condition. Maybe you love the nose. Maybe you love the mouth. Maybe you love uh, in, the, in the world of the arrows or uh, feeling love, filial or arrows, you either see the lady, oh, she's cute. She's beautiful. Oh, she has, she has Coca-Cola shape. Oh, she looks eh, sexy. So the love comes. Then that same person you loved will give birth and become something else or will be involved in an accident 
air will change. That beauty that will not be there forever, which is the condition that attracted you to that unconditional love you are preaching, is lost. But when we read the book of First John, uh, John chapter three verse sixteen, and also epitomized in First John chapter three verse. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, we will understand that first and foremost, love is seen through giving. The unconditional, see, you can't tell anybody you love the person without giving. Love is epitome. You see, I was reading Steve Harvey's book, and one thing caught my attention. He said, love is a verb. Mm. I said, wow, this is deep. It may be a circular book. I know I read, so you see, love is a verb. So love is an active word. Love is a doing word. So love is not passive. Love is active. Amen. Amen. Love is not what we feel. Love is a choice, it's a decision. To, to do something no matter what. I know as we are talking about love, somebody is looking at his shoes. A lot of you love your shoes more than God. Yes, yeah, some people love their phones. So when they are phone for, they, they hold their hands, they say, hey, my phone, because maybe it's an Apple, uh, is, it, is it 12 Pro, 13 Pro, whatever they call it. A lot of people now love materialism and now want to compare materialism with God. Hallelujah. See, the essence of this unconditional love is what we want to look at. And in John chapter 3, verse 16, say, For God so loved the world. How can God love this wicked world? Sometimes I ask myself, Ah, yes. You created the world. Even you came to the world, they rejected you. So why the need? They said, for God so loved the world. So anytime we talk about for God so loved the world, the people begin to ask questions. If God loves the world, how come there are wars? If God loves the world, how come there are uh, wickedness? How can God love even the wicked? Listen, God loves. But I need you to understand that the love of God is unconditional. Amen. Now, John chapter 3 says, for God so loved the world. You can Google who love right now. I know the first thousand you will see will be how to date, how to find love, searching for love, loving somebody how to love somebody. Those things will come. The next half will be music. Music by maybe Westlife, I Love You, Celine Dion, and all the others. Maybe the final part will tell you how to make love. But you see, the world lacks love. Because if you love somebody, you don't want to hurt the person. Anytime there is an essence of love, there is always that mind. So Paul, in his love letter to the Roman church, and that is why we are here gathered, is a letter Paul wrote to the Roman church. It's in the book of Romans chapter five. I call it the love letter to the church. The church in Rome is like the church of this world today. Commerce was rising. People were worshiping other gods. They, they, they were worshiping money. They were worshiping power, authority. But in the faith book or the faith chapter, as you have it, the book of Romans was written in one compendium. It was not broken down in chapters, but the chapters is for our easy reading. So often you want to connect the dots. 
from chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, when Jesus, when, when Paul began to tell the church and started telling them how they have changed the, the, the love of God. They have made for themselves lizard as their God, snakes as their God, shoes as their God. Anything that they, they had feeling for, they turned it to God. So in verse 24, he said that they made creatures of their own hand and worshiped them. So God gave up. That's Romans chapter 1 or verse 24. So God gave up their desires for reprobate sin. Yes, so God gave them up. So their desires were no longer for the, their husbands. Women started loving women. Men started loving men. And they gave up their carnal ways of living. So when you read verse 26, you see that even as they did not like and retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to the reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, debate. Oh, thank you, man of God, for, for, for putting it up there. Deceit, malignant, whisper, backbiters, haters of God, despite, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, Covenant breakers, without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which committed such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasures in them that do them. So you see, from, from verse 26, he says that for this cause, God gave up unto vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into an unnatural. So this LGBT debate that is all going, the only reason is that the love of God grew cold in their hearts. And because the love of God grew cold in their hearts, they decided to start worshiping things. So from verse 25, he said, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature? more than the creator who is blessed forever. A lot of us have changed our love. The love we have for God is no longer there. When the man of God is preaching, you are sleeping, you are WhatsApping, you are Facebooking. The man of God is preaching. The love is gone cold. They are no more interested in the things of God. People will go to church. When they have a date at seven o'clock, they will be there at six. But when it's time for church, they will have to be late. No, I am not castigating. I'm not lambasting anybody doing the watching, doing the listening for being late. But all I'm saying is that we have desire for more things, but anything you love, you have time for. The things you love, you have time for. That is why you have time to cook. That is why you have, because you love food, you have time to cook. Oh, you love to dress, so you have time to wash. But when it is time for God, we are always late. We always think that, oh, God will understand. Oh, God will always wait for us. So our heart and our love, the things that, could bring us nothing. Imagine you are going to class, you are going for lectures. When lectures start at five o'clock, you are there by 4.30, you are even there by four, because when you don't go early, somebody will take your seat. You are more convenient, more, you are more adaptable to the things of this world that, hey, you are going for a job, job CV, you write it well, you lay down your CV and everything, you iron your dress, you prepare to go. Then when you get to the interview, you go there early, you have love, you want to be paid. How much can they pay you that will sustain you? See, a lot of us are working, but let me tell you, the work you are doing is a ripoff. If God can give you even more than that, if you serve him, see, a lot of people are not working. You are hurry going to work at 4 a.m., 4, 3 a.m., 5 a.m., and you are rushing, making sure that things are done well. The CEO is working, is, 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 is wearing some boxes, sitting in a parlor and drinking wine, and you are running helter skelter. The money is going to him. If he is not getting value on you, he would have thrown you away. It's not because he loved you, but God loves you so much that he can provide for all your needs. Okay? But this is how we have treated God because we think that 
Oh, God will understand. But there are rules for God so love the world. Mm. The message is the love of God. See, my brother, my sister, you're doing the listening, you're doing the watch, wherever you are. I need you to understand that the love of God knows no bound. But is the love you have for God reciprocate with what he has for you? Do you think that you are loving God enough the way he loves you? No, I'm not sure. Even your love for God is not even able to reach them. Now listen to 1 John chapter 3, verse 11 downwards. From verse 12, he says that Cain, who was of the devil, why was he of the devil, my brother? Watch it. It was not because Cain had the devil in him. No, because Cain refused to give his all. A lot of you are able to give, if the president of the world could walk into your room right now and say that every money you have, give it to me, you will not do it, right? You will do it quickly. But when God say, give it to me, you will not. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one. The wicked one does not like to give. He likes to take. He likes to take. It's like a deep hole. You keep feeling never. So Cain did not give God a worthy sacrifice. The Abel, so when you read Hebrews chapter 11, you'll find out that even in the hall of famous, Abel was found in the hall of famous, the faith world of hall of famous, because he is counted faithful because he gave. He gave a more worthy sacrifice. The judgment between Cain and Abel is not because we didn't see where Cain was going to church. We didn't see where Cain was speaking. He was not speaking in tongues. We didn't see anywhere. We said that Cain committed fornication or uh, Cain killed and uh, did something evil. But what he did, what led him to killing his brother was because his brother gave up his all. People will hate you because you gave your all. Sometimes when you give your tithe, people will say, oh, you are a fool. You are giving this tithe to this pastor. You will chop it. What is it? But I am telling you, the love of God is epitomized in giving. So John chapter 3, verse 16, point it out that for God so loved the world that he gave. See, love is predicated by giving. You can't tell me you love me, but you cannot give me. You have to give me your time. You have to give me your all. A lot of us are not giving our all to God. We think that we should worship God. In where I come from, we call it Pasevide Bovide. Oh, we are worshiping God small, but we are loving ourselves small. Oh, for in case God fails, I can balance it. God never fails because his love is unconditional. So Paul, let's read the book of Romans chapter 5. We will get to verse 8, but Romans chapter 5, he says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. And not only so, but the glory in tribulation, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Verse 4, and patience experience and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad. Hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So when you read Galatians chapter 5, you will find out the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. So therefore, see, if you have God in you, you will love. See, sometimes you love people too well. You know the person is hurting you. The person is the one killing you. The person is the one causing you pain. But you still, you don't know why you love the person. It's because God's love is in your heart. A lot of people hate people who hate them. The, the, the people of the world will love people who love them. Do you think that the occult people don't love the people who love them. But if a witch knows that you hate him, he will try to kill you. But if you know you love him, he will not mind you. You see, so in this our work with life, one thing I have come to is that the Holy Spirit has given it unto us. You cannot have the love of God on your own. My brother, with your own strength, you will fail. With your own desire, you will fail. But if you have the love of God in your heart, I say you will do all things. Mm. Hallelujah. You will do all things because the love of God is in our heart. So uh, Romans chapter 5, 
Verse 5 says, and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God. The reason the hope does not make ashamed is because the love of God is shed abroad our hearts. The love of God is shed abroad your heart, wherever you are. See, I know that sometimes people hurt you and you say that I will not forgive. But see, I know if God's love is in your heart, you will forgive them. Sometimes you will not give them the opportunity to hurt you again. But sometimes even when you don't want to help them, you say you want to help them. Sometimes you see, see, anytime, my brother, my sister, listen, anytime you have the opportunity to hate somebody, but you find yourself helping that person is God. Wow. That is the love of God. So verse 16, from verse 6, you say that, for when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for us. For when we were yet without strength, what is the strength? Remember, the joy of the Lord is our strength. When the joy of the Lord was not in our hearts, when we did not have the tenacity, the ability to do anything, when we were useless, when nobody loved us, God still loved us. We watch those adverts, the advert of McDonald's, the advert of toothpaste, the advert, any advert you watch, you see that they want to sell joy, but joy is not found in them. You have, they said your computer will work well. Has it worked well for you? They say your phone will work well. They say if you have it, you can take this picture, you can do this, you can do that. Has it done for you? All the adverts they did, that to strengthen the products they have, could not do it. But he said that even then Christ died for us. He did not die for us because he knew that some of you would turn back. It is the, the same people he fed, the 5,000 people he fed. It was the same people who said crucify him. But he said, Father, forgive them. Would you forgive them even when you know that they hate you? The reason God does not reveal some people who even hate you is that sometimes when they hate you, you return the hate. But see, when somebody hates you and you return love for it, what you are doing is that you are killing the person. I am getting to verse 8. Verse 7 says that for scarcely for a righteous man will, will one die, yet pre, per adventure for a good man should some would even dare to die. Listen, for scarcely for a righteous man will no one die. When the man is righteous, no man is willing to die for him. Yet per adventure a good man some will even want to die. If the person is a good man, you say, oh, I'm making, oh, my father was a good man, or oh, at least I should have died in place. Yes, because he was a good man. But for a righteous man, who is a righteous? For the righteousness of men are imputed by the Holy Spirit, not by our own doing, because our righteousness are like filthy rats. But the righteousness of Christ is imputed into us. Now listen to verse 8. But God commanded his love towards us commended sorry god did what god commended his love towards us mm. oh when somebody something is commended unto you eh, it means you don't deserve it i have a house i'm commending it to you see god commended his love towards us in that whilst we were yet sinners christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of him. See, God is love, but God is also hate. Mm. I know you don't want to hear this one. God is love does not mean that. See, he hates certain things. His love is unconditional. That is, see, the love is meaningless. Unconditional love is meaningless if there can be punishment. Did you not read? By a Bible says that a child that the father loves, he chastises, he beats, he prunes. He said that a tree that is bearing fruit, little fruit, he prunes. Who told you the pruning process is easy? Go and ask a tree that is bearing fruit and they are pruning it. They are cutting away some parts. It will be feeling the pain. So even God loving you, you have to go through the pain. I know that sometimes you ask yourself, oh, does God really love me? Is God showing me this love? Is God there? Can God give me everything? Yes, God can give it to you. But listen, are you ready? Are you ready? 
Remember, God loved Moses, but he was in the wilderness for 40 years. Ah, see, nobody should tell you that love does not mean that you cannot have pain. See, Jesus, after fasting and praying for 40 days, ah, he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Who told you that if you fast 40 days, that means you are exempted from a uh, Temptation, you are exempted from pain, you are exempted from suffering. That is the love. That is where you must show your love unto God. Because when you are in the spirit, my brother, my sister, I know you will agree with me. It is the day you decide to be righteous, the day you are in a more prayerful mood, the day you are fasting, the day you are more spiritual. Ah, that is the day somebody you did something for, somebody you show so much help, someone you did so much love for will turn up against you and back. And backbite you, then your anger will come. But I come to tell you that God commended His love towards us. Hey, God loved us so much to wait. Listen, God loved the Samaritan woman so much that He went to the well and sat down waiting for Him. God loved the Gadarenes. That he said, there is a need, we go to Gadara. So I have fed 5,000 people. Peter, James, John, and Paul, quickly be on that boat. Be going to the land of the Gadarens because I am coming there. Then the next verse, you see that he went up the mountain and started praying. Then at 4 a.m., he began to walk on the water. Then Peter saw him and Peter said, ah, if it is you, oh Lord, bid me to come. Peter, you were supposed to be in the boat. Your purpose was not to walk on water, Peter. Some of you, where God wants you to go, you want miracle. You want people to see that you are walking on water. I am talking about the unconditionality of love. If the, you don't see the conditionality, the conditionality of love is for your obedience with God. Nobody should tell you that, oh, you are grace. In the grace world, there is no more sin. My brother, the in grace, there is the laws of Christ. Read the book of Galatians. So this is where the mystery of Galatians 2.20 hits me so well. It is no longer I. It is no longer you. See, what do I mean? A dead goat fears no night. If you are dead to this world, listen, if you are dead to this world, that is when you love. So for love to grow in you, my brother, my sister, you must die to this world. For you to have that unconditionality of love, you must die to this world. Read Galatians chapter 5, eh, chapter 2, verse 20 for me. And get the mystery in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. That is how the love of God is shared at God. Hallelujah. Are you there with me? Galatians chapter uh, 2, verse 20. Listen to what it says. You see, sometimes it is, I, I don't only love to just uh, quote it because sometimes when you quote it, you miss, you, you try to paraphrase. Now, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, this is what it says. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Hmm. Paul is telling the Galatians, see, listen, as for me, I am crucified with Christ. Where was Paul when Jesus was being crucified? Look, read it, read it, you will get it. Read it. Listen, you will find it there. The mystery of Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says what? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm. Listen, you cannot die and not have love. For a grain of wheat to grow and multiply, it is shedding love, so it must first die. My brother, are you ready? My sister, are you ready to die? You must be dead to the See, where the love of iPhone cannot corrupt you, where the love of changing figures in that office cannot corrupt you, then the love of God is growing in your heart. Today is day one. I don't want to bore you with much talk, but I have come to share with you the love of God. When he talks about the love of God, tomorrow I need you need to invite somebody. 
Because tomorrow I'll be sharing seven important secrets that will change your life. Something that will bring a revolution in your love life. Oh. I know you have been proposed to and you had that feeling. Oh, John loves me. Oh, a sister Grace loves me. Oh, so you have that. It, when we share tomorrow's message, I always tell my congregation that I read the Bible like a love story. I know you've read the Stephen Sheldon's. I know you've read the Mills and Booms. Yes, I read all those also. But nothing compares to the love of God. When you begin to read the Bible like a love letter God is writing to you, then will your heart be filled with gladness. Then anytime suffering is coming, you say, oh, the greater joy that comes from this small affliction cannot be compared. So I will bear with it. My brother, my sister, I'm asking you this evening, this morning, wherever you are, what is the love of God? How unconditional is it to you? God loves you. God what? Loves you. And tomorrow, like I said, we will share, we will go deeper. Today is just introduction. So I want to leave it here. I want you to break it down. I want you to have a moment of introspection. But as a pastor called into the office of an evangelist, there's always an altar call at the end of my sermon. I know people have hurt you. I know people have been mean towards you. I know as we speak, there is that person, hey, you hate with passion. That anytime you see him your, or her, your heart beats. And you, you, you will never want to forgive. I agree with you. But this evening, I recommend you to Jesus. See, the pain in your heart only hurts you, not the person. It's like you drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You are taking poison for somebody. That is what it is. Anytime you see the person, you get angry. But the person is living free. Today, I entreat you. You've hurt, somebody has hurt you. But remember, you have also hurt somebody. So you want to ask God, Father, I do not love you more and more. But let your love be shed abroad in my heart. Let your love come into my heart. I have hated people. I have been disobedient myself. I have gone wrong astray from your love. Like the prodigal son, my father is not sitting in the home waiting for me. He saw me afar off. No matter how far you have gone away from God, it takes only one step back to God. The prodigal son left. See, he left. It was genuinely his possession. It was genuinely his own. He, the father divided the property and gave his to him. So he did not steal it. He qualified for it, but he lived riotously. Then he said to himself, I will come back to my father. Today is your coming back to your father. I know you've been religious. You've been going to church. You have been playing church. You sing in church. I know you have been playing religion. Yeah, religion is good because religion is humanity, seeking divinity. But You've been doing it because you want people to know that, oh, me too, I'm a Christian. But there is no Christian without love. Galatians 5, verse 25 says, if life is spiritual, then live it spiritual. Love is spiritual. So therefore, maybe you want to say this. Say, Lord Jesus, let your love fill me. Fill me with your love. Love that cannot be described by even me. The love that will blow my mind. That even people who know me would be surprised of what I do. Give me the heart to love like you. A heart like yours. A heart like yours. A heart to love like you. 
that when people were even killing you, crucify, he said, forgive them because you loved them. Like when you got to Jerusalem and saw the city of Jerusalem and you wept. Father, today when I see them, I want to weep over them and say, forgive them for they know not what they do. If I have wronged anybody, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, and make me anew again. Thank you for your love. As we go to bed, may your love be injected into our chromosome. May it be injected into our DNA. If people call me an Akan because I have an Akan blood, people call me a gun because I have a gun blood. If people call me an Ever because I have an Ever blood, then people must begin to call me love because the love of God, I am part of God's family and it's a family of love. Lord, share your love with us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. With this prayer, it is not a poem. It is not a salvation, but it is salvation from hate. It's salvation of unconditional love. You are no longer of the flesh. The love of God is shed abroad your heart. God bless you for your time. And I say, may this time you have spent before God not be in waste. If I be a man of God, I prophesy that the number of hours we have spent on the internet, the finances you have wasted or spent to do this, may God cause an increase in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, man of God. God bless you. And God bless all of you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. That was powerful. I was supposed to say this was just an introduction. And I was asking myself, if the introduction is this deep, then when he started releasing the seven point, oh, come on. Mm. I don't know if you can hear me. You just want to unmute your mic and begin to speak some wonderful words into his life. You want to thank God for his life. If you can hear me, you just want to unmute your mic and bless the man of God with some wonderful words in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your servant. We thank you for the, the strength that came out. We are asking that replenish him, restore him, increase him, oh Lord. Release unto him a fresh oil that he will do even better than today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, thank you so much. I, uh, in fact, I personally can thank you because I, I, indeed, we need to be learning every day. Yes. We need to, and I heard things I was like, oh, wow, this is there. <laughs> thank you so much. This was great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So today is day one. And he just cleared the path for us. We just want you to see what is coming tomorrow. If you, you are here today and you miss tomorrow, then you wasted your time. If you are here today and you miss tomorrow, the person that is not here and will come tomorrow, the person has even done better than you. <laughs> so all I'm trying to say is that the same energy that brought you here tonight or this morning, tomorrow you want to come. And he said, when you are coming, bring someone, show love to someone. It's not only about money. You know, you are bringing the person to come and hear the word of God. It is because you love him or her. So tomorrow when you are coming, don't be selfish. You want to invite a brother or a sister or a family member so that they will also learn about this unconditional love of God. Amen. All right. So before we end for tonight, if you have any testimony or you have any word you want to share, you have um, 30 seconds to do that. Do you have any testimony? Are we together? Everybody's mic is muted. Are you asleep? Or your background is noisy? Okay, we can only assume you are hearing us. Do we, does anybody have any testimony to, to share? All right, so if there is none, we won't waste much time. Before Osoku will bless us with the benediction, I just want to appeal to all of us once again that tomorrow, the time is seven, 
but he was here exactly seven. Exactly seven. I'm like, hey, today they are, 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 are. you people have disgraced me, you know. The singer was here, the preacher was here, and the, 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 the members were not here. In fact, tomorrow, let's, let's turn on the news. It's seven o'clock, as you said. You know, tomorrow you are here. Genuinely, you know you want to be here. You should put everything in order that before seven, you'll be here. I've always been saying something that coming to the house of God is a lot. There is a pleasant from the beginning, there is a pleasant in the doing or in the middle, and there is a pleasant at the end. The sad thing is that you don't know whether your blessing is in the beginning or the middle or the end. So if you don't come early and we have started and your blessing is gone, you will have to wait really for some other time to receive it again. So sometimes we are our own problem. So please, people of God, tomorrow it is seven. Let's come on time. It's at least seven. I am trusting God that we will start. So God bless you so much for coming and we want to see you tomorrow. Amen. As a whole, you kindly bless us with the benediction then we be close for tonight. May the grace of God that surpasses all human understanding be with you. May the Lord who rises the sun from the east in the morning and sets it at the west in the evening, rise you up in Jesus' name. This night, may you have an encounter with love. May the unconditional love be spread abroad, abroad your heart. May God visit you in your night season. I pray that your day will never be the same again. After hearing this message, may you move from grace to grace. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, God bless you once again so much for coming. Also, God bless you so much. It was indeed more than powerful, but I've been blessed a lot. So, see you tomorrow, 7 o'clock, so that we continue to learn about this unconditional love of God. Uh, those who are in Ghana, good night. May you have a divine visitation even as you speak tonight. And my fellow Chinese, good morning to you. And those who want to rest again, have a wonderful night. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. <laughs>